completely. So in this section, we're not talking tint films. We are talking specifically and purely safety and security films. So these are the clear films that are used to protect the windows. So the safety film, the way I divide it is a safety film is a film that will hold broken glass together and increase penetration resistance. So essentially what I mean by that is um, it's there for safety. Uh, security films, on the other hand, are designed to help prevent people getting through the windows. <coughs> so uh, they're there as a security item. So safety films hold the broken glass uh, together and to increase the penetration resistance. So you can see here from the picture, uh, a safety film on this window means that the glass doesn't just fall out. Safety film often gets used in homes in areas where um, people are, are concerned about um, their you know, people in their homes or their, their children going right through a glass window. Um, I know that I had, um, when my 21 year old was, was about three or four, um, he put on his sister's pink bike helmet and rode her pink tricycle down the stairs straight towards a big glass window. And I just thank heavens that he didn't actually go right through it. But that's the sort of thing where a safety film would have made a big difference if, you know, if he had gone right through it. I think he would have learned from that. But no, unfortunately, he did it a second time as well. I think it took him a while to, to work out that it probably wasn't a clever thing to do. But holds the film together to stop it. Uh, to stop people going through and getting hurt um, or just, just to help um, protect from storm damage by maintaining the building shell. So a standard safety film construction would either be a couple of layers of polyester or in more commonly one layer of polyester with a scratch resistant hard coat and an adhesive uh, underneath. So you can see here from this picture this is the glass, this is the adhesive stuck to the glass, and the polyester and hard coat layers on the top. We've got a, a very, very hard acrylic coat on the top. That's the acrylic hard coat that um, will make it far more resistant to scratching and damage and um, help to pre prevent the, the film getting damaged. It's the same hard coat we use on the tint films as well as the safety and security, but you can see here, in this case, the resistant hard coat actually does a really good job as a graffiti scratch protection as well. So that's why, how that, you know, that, that made a, you know, it comes about. For the products we use in New Zealand, it's usually a single layer of polyester. Um, up to our S70s are a single layer of polyester. We can get things bigger than S70. There is an S, S140, which is this double layer. Not common though. Now the security film is made quite differently. The security film is made from um, multiple layers of tear resistant film. So instead of being one layer of polyester, We've got multiple layers of polyester cross-laid. Polyester is particularly strong in one direction, but it will rip in the other direction fairly easily. So when we cross-lay them, it gives it a, a strength like a, like a web or a mat and makes it very, very difficult to, to get through. Um, and in the case of our S800, um, we've had S400, S600, now S800. S800 is about 52 layers of polyester all cross laminated with each other. Um, it's amazing, 52 layers all laminated together and it's still optically clear. So uh, we've still got a pressure sensitive adhesive. We've got all of these layers of tear resistant film and we've once again got a resistant, uh, scratch resistant hard coat on the top. So that's how we construct them. There are multiple case benefits for safety and security window film. The sort of places that we'd use it would be safety glazing, somewhere where you want to provide um, a barrier for protection. You know, for example, you can see the child in this, you know, in this image here, just to make the glass safer to stop people going through it. Um, not that I'm going to play it here, but there is a, um, a great um, short um, film segment done in Australia um, by their current affairs program, Our Current Affair, about safety glazing and about the need to have safety glazing in the home. There have been a number of instances in Australia where 
children have gone through uh, windows and been uh, been killed or been badly hurt by going through the window. Um, but once again, the same thing here. If we put something on the window, we can protect uh, protect the window. <coughs> I will talk more about it later, but um, we had a schools program here where we protected all the glass in schools, and that was a safety glazing program, but I'll, I'll talk about that one separately. Purely for glass breakage, um, it's possible just to use this in situations where you know the glass is prone to being broken. Um, Christchurch and, you know, the, uh, and the Wellington regions are you know, good for that. I mentioned earthquakes before, and that's a case of sometimes people will put uh, film on the glass because they know it can be broken by you know, in this down here seismic but in this case just just glass breakage good example we had of this one was um, the old 277 um, shopping center in uh, Newmarket in Auckland before they did the big renovations uh, last over the last few years they had a big atrium it's still there but they've they've done it differently the atrium went up about four stories and all of the uh, the glass protecting that atrium um, you know balustrade level uh, was all toughened glass and they had some issues with spontaneous glass breakage which we'll talk more about later uh, and they put film on there just to prevent you know not won't stop the glass breaking but just prevent it coming out of the frame Protection from breaking an entry, um, so that we would use a security film rather than a safety film. It just makes it really hard to get through. We can't make them bomb proof. We can't make them um, bulletproof. And uh, all we can do is help to protect the film to, to stop people getting through, or, or should I say, um, slow people down from getting through the film. Um, we can put films on for blast mitigation, so if a bomb goes off, we'll help to hold the windows together, but they're not bomb proof and they're not bulletproof. We can do it for windstorm protection. Not so much a big issue here in New Zealand. We don't tend to get the big storms that some countries get, uh, but there are a number of parts of the world where this is a really big thing for them, uh, where they get extremely high winds. Um, you know, think... Um, uh, tornado alley in the US or the or the coastal areas. Uh, I, knew, I know New Orleans has just had a bit of a you know, bit of a hard run lately. Um, again, uh, but we can put film on the windows to help for to protect the glass from windstorms. We can use it for anti graffiti purposes. We actually have a product called AG4, uh, which we can use as an anti graffiti product on the glass. Uh, that will help to uh, to prevent uh, the glass being damaged by graffiti. So you can scratch it. You, know, you can scratch that hard coat to your, to your heart's content. Yes, it will scratch, but it acts like a sacrificial surface. So you can peel it off and you can put something, uh, put another layer on. We talked about seismic. We can actually hold the glass together in the event of an earthquake. Uh, what tends to happen is the earthquake will flex the, the frame from side to side and pop the glass out. So the glass will blow out and go a heck of a long way. Um, I saw some tests done where they measured the amount of flying glass from a standard window when they pushed the frame top and bottom corners, and the glass went out, you know, probably 10, 15 meters from the window. But when they put window film on there, um, the glass spalled and they got some shards of glass off, but they were within a meter of the window. So it definitely helped to protect people from flying glass. Now, you've got to be careful with seismic, though. If you do have a big earthquake, it is possible to get the glass coming out of the frame and coming down onto the street below in one solid piece, which is why, in this case, we actually have uh, ways of securing the, the film into the frame. And that's here, the attachment system. Uh, we've got what we call I, um, impact protection adhesive, IPP, uh, IPA. And it's not isopropyl alcohol, it's impact protection adhesive. Don't you just love all the acronyms? Okay, human impact. When it comes to helping to protect people, you need safety glazing to make the glass stronger and glass breakage safer. Okay, the intent of this is to make the glass break safe. So if it does break, and it will, we can't stop the glass breaking, but we'll stop all the shards coming out of the glass. Um, usually tempered or laminated glass will be the way to go, but uh, we actually have standards I actually need to change this because the standard in New Zealand um, is the Australian New Zealand standard 2208. So that actually standard number is wrong. I actually got it correct later in the presentation. It's only when you see these things later that you realize that you've forgotten it. Uh, 
in this case, it is a very similar test to the one with the one that we run, but this test involves a hundred pound lead shot leather bag dropped from a distance of um, 1.5 to four feet. So the, the height they've lifted it. So we actually did a bunch of tests here in New Zealand with this and found that it does a remarkably good job of holding the glass together and the bag doesn't go right through and the, and all the frame doesn't, you know, the glass doesn't come out of the frame. So we would recommend safety glazing in glass doors, shower doors, patios, sliding glass doors, balconies, uh, glass elevators, and anything where you've got glass within 18 inches of floor level. So yeah. in New Zealand, we've, we've tended to say anything less than two meters, um, make sure it's safety glazing. The reason that I show you this is that what we actually did here in New Zealand was that um, back in 2008, yes, uh, sorry, 1998, yes, it was that long ago, uh, there was a girl running for a ball um, in a Blenheim um, intermediate school called Bill Bohawley Intermediate. She ran right through a window. She didn't see it and she ran right through the window and ended up with um, being um, normal anneal glass that breaks into big shards. She got a shard of glass through the heart and she died. Apart from the obvious tragedy of losing a child, the New Zealand government suddenly realised that they actually had an issue in all of the, the New Zealand schools where they weren't protecting the students well enough. So they came to us saying, look, we know you've got films that you can put on windows. Have you got something that could protect all of, our, all of the school's windows? So we said, yes, we've got product. Back then it was called SH7, but these days it's called S70. And we said, well, that will probably be the product you need. And the government then said, yep, that's fine, but we want to know that it's going to work. So we got some testing done just to prove that it would work. Then they came to us saying, well, yep, okay, you've proved it's going to work, but what's it going to be like when it reaches the end of its warranty, which was um, in those, those days was 12 years. So we tested some 12 year old glass. We, we went through our warranty documents in Australia and we found a customer that had had S, uh, H7 applied to their windows uh, 12 years prior. And we went to them saying, well, we've got a deal for you. We'd like to buy your windows. We'll replace all of your windows. We'll put new glass in there. We'll put more window film on there and you'll get all of that for nothing. We just need the windows. And of course the customer rubbed their hands in glee and said, yippee, yes, please. So we've got a whole bunch of windows with 12 year old SH7 or S70 on it. So we could do the tests just as described here <coughs> and prove to the New Zealand government that even after 12 years, the film was going to be acting just as just as well as it did when it was new. And we've got those tests and we showed the government and the government said, yes, please, that's what we want. So the schools program went ahead in 2000. We and a number of companies and just about every single person that had ever applied a square meter of film was applying film to schools. We applied safety film to every single pane of glass that wasn't already toughened or wasn't already laminated uh, below two meters in every single school in New Zealand. And we applied safety film to every single pane of glass regardless of the height if it was a gymnasium because obviously balls and gymnasiums will hit the top windows so we went through and we got film on every single New Zealand school so we've done a fair amount of S70 work in New Zealand and we know it works and we've got very good experience with it so the S70 is definitely the way to go for securing glass like this there is a product that's a bit thinner and that's S40 so S40 is a hundred microns or 40 thousandths of an inch um, S70 is 175 microns or um, or seven thousandths of an inch. The, the four and the seven are, you know, denote the, the, the thickness in thousandths of an inch. So S40 and S70 both meet the Australian New Zealand standard for safety glazing. So you can use either, but we chose to use the thicker product in schools just because it gave them a, a greater measure of security. So that's where that one comes from. We can upgrade existing glass to safety glass. Um, and here I do have it here, Australian New Zealand standard 2208 from 1996 at a grade A level, which is the highest rating. 
Um, these, these tests were done for us in the Australian CSIRO, and there are certificates around for those. Now, what we tend to provide rather than certificates is we'll tend to provide a producer statement. So anyone asks, we can provide a producer statement saying that um, they are tested and approved and meet at a grade A level. If you are putting stickers on the glass, um, the um, some of the standards that require marking of the film, they say, you've got to say whose film it is, which product it was. This is an old sticker because it says SH7. Uh, it's meeting 2208 at a grade A. OC in means it's an organic coating on the glass on the inside. So in this case, it's a window film on the inside and it has to be less than 0.2 millimeters thick. All of them are, they're all less than 0.2 millimeters. So essentially a sticker like that needs to go onto the glass before you put the safety film on if the, um, uh, the council require it. So there are some cases where the council say, well, I want proof that it meets it and you've got to put a sticker on the window. Other councils say, no, just send us the, uh, the producer statement. But you, in some cases, you have to prove that you meet um, the, glazing, the glazing standards. We'll talk more about that at the end too, because it's a little bit more complicated than it looks. Spontaneous glass breakage. Spontaneous glass breakage is a risk that you'll get with tempered glass. It only occurs in tempered glass and it's caused by nickel sulfide inclusions during the tempering process. So nickel sulfide is a contaminant in the glass. And when they temper the glass, so basically by tempering it, is they'll heat it up to a certain temperature and hold it there for a period of time. And that process will harden the outside of the glass. But often when it does that, these tiny little bits of nickel sulfide will appear on the surface. Um, if the nickel sulfide inclusions um, grow over time, which they can, sometimes the nickel sulfide can end up breaking the glass. So that's what causes spontaneous glass breakage. One in 1,000 pieces of tempered glass may spontaneously break. Um, 277 Broadway's problem was that they were getting spontaneous uh, glass breakage. So in, these, uh, in this atrium with these glass um, balustrades, there was a cafe underneath at that stage, and it was really concerning for the cafe owner. Suddenly, if one of these broke and it rained shards of glass down on all, all of his customers, um, it definitely wasn't a good look. So they chose to put um, S70 uh, on all of those pieces of glass to protect them. Very similar situation we had with um, the University of Waikato, a building of theirs in Tauranga that needed safety film um, put on the glass because they put tempered glass in and then realised that all of these balcony rails weren't actually protected so the glass could break and fall out on, on people walking underneath. So they also have chosen S70 to put on all of those windows. Uh, it's not usually a big risk, but often the risks are high enough to warrant do some, doing something about it. And as, yeah, as was the case with 277 and the University of Waikato building, they chose uh, to mitigate those risks. They should have, in hindsight, may have been put um, laminated toughened glass in, but I think they figured that the cost of laminated toughened glass was far more expensive than coming along and retrofitting safety film on afterwards, which was great for us, but um, yeah, it, it's just the way they chose to go. Safety window films will hold broken glass together. So if you anchor the, the, the window film into the frame in some way, you can hold it in place. What we often find is that, um, it's hard to see in this photograph, but um, usually what we would do in many cases like this is glass is often held into the frame in some of these cases by a thing called a spider which is um, a hole through the glass and a large round coupling that gets screwed through. So if you've got four of those holding four corners of four pieces of glass, it looks like a spider. So they call them spider fittings. If that's the case, then you would want to carefully remove the fitting. Don't take all of them out, just take out one or two at a time. Put your film in and then screw the, uh, the cover back over it. That way the film gets trapped under the spider and if the glass gets broken, the, um, the glass is held in the frame. Or alternatively, um, you get some frames that can be assembled with a, uh, with a metallic strip around them afterwards. That's the sort of thing that, that you want. Or um, <coughs> the other alternative um, is to use something like a uh, impact protection adhesive, which is silicon that we would silicon around the edge to hold the glass into the frame. 
but really we often will require some way of holding the glass into the frame just to you know just to give that that extra you know measure of security because just filming the window may not be enough strangely enough just filming to the edge of the glass actually does quite a good job of holding it into the frame even if it breaks because every crack takes up a finite amount of space and it will stretch slightly so the film will end up wedging itself out into the into the frame and it can just hold be enough to hold the glass into the frame next one intrusion protection windows provide an easy entry point for intrusion and one of the weakest points of the building are windows so in the US, $15 billion was lost due to property related crimes in the US where someone's broken in through a window. Upgrading to fortified glass is very expensive, but window films, while they're not bulletproof, they can slow an intruder down enough just to uh, you know, allow time for the authorities to react. So while we're saying um, we can't stop people getting through and you never want to say that your film's bulletproof. You never want to say that you'll stop the intruders getting in. All you can say is that you'll slow them down. Um, not something that we'll be covering in this course, but there is video footage around of people trying to hack through windows that have been broken. You're just not going to get through them very easily. Yeah, I've, I've done experiments. Um, I've done training courses with um, government officials down in Wellington, and we've hacked through these things. We've thrown bottles at them, and it's, it's really, really hard to get through them. It does really, really make it difficult just by having something on there. In this case, it would be a safety, uh, sorry, a security film rather than a safety film. But either way, it just makes life, makes life a lot easier. Blast mitigation. This one is an interesting one. Blast mitigation reduces additional injury from glass shards. So what we're saying here is that we can actually provide a coating, a film that goes onto the glass that will help protect the glass in the event of an explosion. It hasn't tended to be a big problem in New Zealand. We don't tend to have many bombs going off. Um, Every single American embassy in the world is blast mitigated protected. So we have provided, um, back in the day it was S600, now it's S800 safety uh, security film for every single American embassy um, because they're rather concerned about people parking truck bombs outside the embassies because they know it's been done. So the American embassies are all blast protected. The only other one in New Zealand that I know was blast protected was the New Zealand police headquarters in Wellington, because at that time, I believe, I'm not sure if they are, if any Wellingtonian could probably correct me, uh, the New Zealand police headquarters was almost right next door to the, um, uh, to the American embassy. And if anyone parked a truck bomb outside the American embassy and, and didn't blow in the American embassy windows, but did completely annihilate the police station, it wouldn't be, a, be wouldn't have been a good look. So the New Zealand police chose to protect the uh, the floors of their building as well, and that was only because the American embassy was doing the same thing. So what we can do is um, we can apply a film to help to protect. You can see this structure here is the structure we use for blast testing. So we've got these, uh, these rooms with windows and they're built basically concrete, you know, big concrete structures that we can build. And we put window film on these. Then we plant a bomb sort of somewhere out of the edge of the picture here. And we fire the bomb off and we, and we measure with video cameras what happens to these windows. So if you go and have a look on YouTube, I'm sure you'll find um, uh, a lot of videos on there about blast protection. I know I've got a number buried in the drive here, but they don't play very well in this sort of format, unfortunately. Um, but go and have a look online, and it's amazing some of the things you'll see. A window with no blast protection on it at all, the glass will fly in and land against this back wall. I've actually got a better slide here. You can see here the, the, the bunker. And when the bomb goes off, they measure where the glass goes to. A, a rating of one, you said we're talking about 3B, a rating of one means the glass doesn't break. That doesn't happen. We're not going to stop the glass breaking. The film's too flexible to allow that. So the glass will break. So we can never achieve a, a bomb blast rating of one. A two means that it 
uh, the glass breaks, but none of the glass ends up inside. It all ends up outside or still stuck to the window. We can achieve a two. More common is a three where the, the window breaks. Some glass will land in here, you know, sort of land in this area, but only very minimal. Um, a four means that you'll get a lot more glass in here, and a five means that it's impacted up here on the back wall. So if you see a bomb blast video of no film, this glass is going to end up embedded in this back wall. It's just the way it goes. The glass is going to shatter and end up embedded in this wall. And I pity anyone in that room because they will be completely and utterly shredded by flying glass. So we've got third-party testing to the GSA blast standards. And a lot of our films, if they're correctly applied and siliconed into the frame, then we can get often ratings of two and three. So if that's what you need, then that's what we can get done for you. I'm not going to go into too much detail there because it's really not a big, a big issue that we ever have in New Zealand. But um, you know, this is a part from, you know, from an American um, presentation where this says, many sizes of explosions ask your manufacturer the blast pressure and impulse that the rating was achieved under. So we've got different ratings for different, different sizes of blast. And if anyone knows anything about, uh, about explosions, you, you can get uh, different types of explosions, fast ones and slow ones. And you know, it, there is a lot of information about blasts and explosions that I'm not going to go into here. But we do have testing for the window films to these standards. Windstorm protection. The intent really is to preserve the building envelope and keep the elements out. Um, this, we don't have, tend to have a windstorm standard. So this is an American ASTM standard, E1886 uh, from 1996. So this basically says, um, we've got to protect this, these windows from being broken. The broken glass in this resort building is basically um, wind. The wind has come through and blown the windows in. So what you tend to find is that it's not actually the wind that causes the damage. It's the debris that's carried in the wind. So this test consists of shooting uh, BB pellets or you know, small ball bearings at a window and making sure that the glass doesn't shatter or come out. So the BB will go right through the window. So if you're in that room, you will get hit by the flying BB, but you're better off that than having the whole window come out. The test also contains uh, 100 by 50 pieces of wood or two by fours uh, with them propelled and blown through the window. So once again, that's going to go right through the window. It will punch a big hole through the, gla uh, through the glass and it will go right in. The whole point of this, I'm pointing up the screen here, the whole point of this is to stop the glass coming out of the frame. Because what happens in a residential building in a windstorm is that if you get the glass broken and the glass comes out of the frame completely, the pressure of the wind will increase the pressure inside the building and it will push up and out and it will blow out other windows or it can even lift the roof off completely. So if you lose a, a window in a house, you'll also lose the roof. And that's because of the, the pressure generated inside the room from the wind that will blow the roof off. So if you can protect the windows from breaking like this, you'll protect the house. So you may end up with holes in the windows, but that's better than losing the whole house completely. So not, once again, a, not a big issue for here in New Zealand. We don't tend to get the very, very high hurricane winds um, or those wind loads, but having a window film on there definitely does help protect against those sort of things as well, because it will protect the glass from, from being broken and coming out of the frame completely. The next one is anti-graffiti. We've actually got, as I was saying, AG4, but most people here in New Zealand probably would just use um, you know, S40, which is the very similar product. The anti-graffiti or AG films protect the integrity of the glass from vandalism. So essentially, um, if any of you were listening into one of the uh, training sessions I was doing earlier in the week, we were talking about anti-graffiti films. So Really, with anti-graffiti films, you need solvent resistance, you need scratch resistance, and in this case, you're not going to get conformability. It's designed for flat glass, but the AG films last particularly well, but the beauty of the AG films is they have an adhesive that is removable, so 
if the film does get damaged, you can peel it off and put another layer on. So we have a lot of people in New Zealand wanting to use these films for anti-graffiti, but rather than use AG4, they'll just use SH4 because it's more common, it's more available. The only difference between SH4, S40 and AG4 is the adhesive. AG4 is easier to remove if you've got to remove and put another layer on. So we do have anti-graffiti films. We can use S70, we can use S40. Both of them will work in this case. S70 has been used for a number of years in buses in Auckland and Wellington, particularly on routes in parts of the cities where they know they're going to get tagged or etched or scratched or damaged. And um, one particular bus company has denoted that every single window from the rear doors back needs to be protected with S70 because it provides that extra thick layer and measure of protection for the glass. They also found that um, it was cheaper to put that film on and have them scratch that film and replace it. And they reckoned it was about four or five to one. So they could replace it four or five times for the cost of the glass in the window. And they were spending an awful lot of money on window glass. So anti-graffiti is definitely something that you, should, you guys should be looking at. Um, talk to your customers and if they've got glass that they know is being badly damaged, it may not just be these um, on bus shelters. In Wellington, there was a lovely one where there was a bus shelter literally right up against the windows of the Wellington Library. And they, the library were getting really annoyed that people sitting in the bus stop were just scratching on the glass. So they were spending a fortune getting people out to polish the scratches out of the glass, which you can only do a couple of times before you weaken the glass so much that you've got to replace it. So they ended up putting an external S70 on the windows of the library, external because you could use it outside and it worked particularly well for them. Okay, the attachment systems. The attachment systems will help contain the film to the broken glass in the frame. And in this case, uh, they're either a sausage or a tube of special silicone. Uh, we used to say, like Henry Ford said, any colour you like as long as it's black, but we've now got a white and a grey version. Unfortunately, there is no clear version. This does not, you know, the, you cannot get this in clear. I've only ever seen this done in New Zealand a handful of times. Most people just don't bother, even though they should. The attachment system is what you need to create a bond between the film and the frame. So by having this wedge-shaped silicon all the way around the edges of the glass, it, it will bond the film and the frame together. So if the glass gets broken, the film hangs on to the structural silicone and the structural silicone will hang on to the frame and it will protect the glass. So you've got to do this for, you know, for a number of situations, which, which, we, uh, which I outline in the next slide. So we call it impact protection adhesive. I know some of you out there will be thinking what happened to IPP, which was the rubber gasket that we could put on. Unfortunately, 3M decided to obsolete that. They just didn't get enough sales. It worked really well, but it was an expensive application that didn't get many sales. So we're, we're down to using structural silicone. Um, we've got some good information on applying this. There's some good videos out there and uh, you know, it, it has proved to be quite an effective installation. So where would you use it? Okay. I would recommend it if you're using it on tempered glass and you're concerned about spontaneous glass breakage. Um, you know, the tempered glass with spontaneous glass breakage. Highly recommend it for impact, uh, for intrusion protection or bomb blast or windstorm. Those three are critical. Like if you've got concerns about people breaking in or bomb blasts or windstorms, you really want to look at that attachment system. Human impact, it's a good idea, but it's not strongly recommended. Definitely don't put it on anti-graffiti because you'll need to peel this off and put another piece on. So you definitely don't want to have um, anti-graffiti um, uh, impact attachment for an anti-graffiti film. In New Zealand, we would probably wouldn't bother with these and we would look at this more closely, but in many cases, we just haven't bothered to do it here. Rightly or wrongly, we just off, often haven't bothered too much about that. Michael, I've yes. just got a question on the impact protection adhesive. Um, when and how long after application should it be put on? 
How is the silicon going to impact any water bubbles if there's any left? Um, or would the water bubbles be tra trapped inside? Um, is there any physical constraints like um, blinds or anything like that, that the silicon cannot be applied to the top part and still do the trick? So just a little bit of understanding on that application. Okay. Firstly, we would recommend that the film was completely stuck to the window. So leave it for at least two or three weeks for the, for the film to correctly adhere to the glass. That will mean that it's completely dry. So you can't do it straight away because otherwise you will have far too much moisture trapped under it. Um, with regard to um, getting it into the frame, some frames are not suitable for it. So you'll need to look at the frame. I, I had one the other day where the photographs simply showed that there was not enough area on the frame to get enough of a bond on there. Um, one of those sausages will probably only do about five lineal meters. So you're going to use an awful lot of the silicone. So for those of you that are costing these jobs, double the cost of the job if you're having to use the silicon there as well. It literally will be that bad because the time and the effort involved with putting this on afterwards is astronomical. So it will pretty much cost you as much again. So this will double the cost of the job. Um, what was the third part of that? Was there one part that I, oh, with regard to blinds and things. Um, you've got to, you've got just got to go with caution. Like I would look at the frame before I went ahead. There are times when you, know, you can get it in there, but you'd want to take all of that sort of stuff off. You'd want to take the blinds down or the curtains down or get all that away from the window just to protect it. Bear in mind, um, the attachment system is, in some cases, a black silicon. You want to put protection down on the floor. You want to make damn sure that you don't get it on anything else because once the stuff sticks to something like carpet, you are not getting it off. So go with caution with the attachment systems. Thank you. Oh, hang on. I think I've got another question. Sure. Um, uh, so, okay. So if you need to put it where you've got to remove the trims, do you apply the silicone and then put back the trims? What if you can't remove the trims to put the attachment? Is the safety film still going to do what it's meant to do? Is it still worth to install or should I advise a client not to waste his money? Is there a way to put the attachment where there's no trims or when we have a wooden frame? Yeah, if, if you're dealing with things like wooden frames, this is not the, the way to go about it. Like the, the attachment system, is, it's not for every situation. Um, you need to look very carefully at your windows before you do it. If you don't have enough frame to get the silicon onto, you're wasting your time. And it is quite a big bead of silicon that, that's used there. You know, the, these, are, these sort of questions are good questions but you want to be very, very cautious about what you're specifying because getting the attachment system to work correctly does require some very exacting um, science when it comes to choosing the correct frame. And as I was saying, I was looking at one the other day where there simply wasn't enough frame to get the silicon to adhere to it. So the attachment system was not the correct way of going about it. In that case, we couldn't provide the attachment system. So the customer has gone with the, with the window film knowing that they don't have it correctly, uh, well, not correctly, that's not the way of putting it, they do not have that added protection of the attachment system. So this is a whole, you know, we, we've got a flavor of it in a couple of slides, but if you are looking at attachment systems, talk to us first, because I've got a whole bunch more information that, that will probably make life easier for you. Too much for this sort of course. And yes, the film will still perform, as yes. a safety film, yes. but it won't hold the full the the um, glass in the frame. So yes, it will still provide the the glass from shattering out, but that's it will still have that benefit. But you may yeah. not be able to hold the glass in the frame. Yeah, yeah. But what I've said is, like of all the jobs I've seen done in New Zealand, I've only ever seen a couple of where they where they used an attachment system. Most of the time in New Zealand, we've just been a bit sort of lax about it and just gone ahead regardless and got away with it uh, because our chances of bomb blasts or our chances of, uh, well, even breaking an entry, um, even without the attachment system for breaking an entry, the glass does end up wedging into the frame and it's really hard to get out. I've seen some really good, um, you know, really good videos of people trying to hack through it with no attachment system and they just couldn't get the glass out of the frame. So usually we don't, but you know, it is something to be, to be cautious of. Right. 
a quick review and some frequently asked questions. So we're on to the last couple of slides, so timing's pretty good. Uh, is the window film installed on the glass or the uh, or window? We normally put them on the inside. Some of these questions will relate to uh, both tint and uh, and safety and security, but um, on the glass window, I, can't, I don't quite know why that's phrased like that, but window films are usually on the inside. We can put some of them on the outside, um, which is why I was saying in that other presentation, if you've got a safety film on the inside and you want to tint the window, then put it on the outside. If you've got a safety film and a tint, um, or you've got a safety film and, for example, um, cut text or an image or a graphic. Uh, maybe it's the window um, in a in a shop and they've got the uh, the shop name there. You've got to remove that first. The safety film must go on the glass. You cannot apply the safety film to another film or on top of frosted or dusted crystal or on top of cut graphics. It's got to go on the glass. You can then replace the graphics and put it onto the window film. So, for example, you can put the window film on and then back that up with, um, you know, with the graphics. That will work and that will work well. But it's got to go on the glass because if you don't, then you're not getting that adhesion and you won't get that protection. Okay, this is what I was talking about with the New Zealand building code. We get a lot of people phoning up saying, do the films meet the building code? The answer is yes, but not directly. The building code re references 4223, which is a standard which says where must safety glazing be used. So the building code simply says you need to use safety glass, safety film, safety glass. But they don't tell you where, they just say you must use it. They reference this standard, which says where it must be used. And 4223 references uh, 2208, which says what is safety film? So we need to test and get our films approved to 2208. Once we're approved to 2208, that means we comply with 4223 if you put it in the correct places, and 4223 complies with the building code. So yes, we meet the building code, but I can't give, give you a certificate saying, here's a certificate saying it's been tested to the building code. No, it's tested to 2008. So it can be a little bit tricky for people to understand, but because of the way the, the standards reference themselves. If I need to replace the glass in the building to meet the building code, could window film be used? Yes. Often what you'll get is um, older windows that no longer comply. For example, as, as happened in the schools project, um, they suddenly discovered all of the windows that should have been safety film weren't. Yes, you can bring your glazing up to standard by using um, S40 or S80, uh, S70. Uh, on the windows because they will bring it up to this glazing standard. Some last slide here, some common window myths. Window films don't last. Safety and security window film warranties can be as long as 12 years. There are, and there are numerous examples of projects lasting well over 20 years. And the New Zealand schools are one of them, where if the glass hasn't been broken and we've put security film on it, uh, safety film on it, it's still there today, and that was 21 years. And the glass is good. It's still as well protected today as it was back then. This is definitely a myth. The films do last. The next one, window films are bulletproof. No, window films are not bulletproof. Window films will hold the glass in place after a bullet goes through, so it'll stop people going through it. What I have seen is people have layered glass film, glass film in multiple layers, and that will stop a bullet. And I've had people, I've seen videos of people standing behind these windows while someone shoots uh, an AR-15 or an AK-7 at the window. I wouldn't want to be standing behind it, but they're obviously confident in, in their product, and they've used multiple layers of glass and film. But a window film on its own applied to glass is not bulletproof, but it will help to slow intruders down from entering. And we can use it, you know, there are bulletproof glasses uh, to add a spool protection. And what I mean by spool protection is that um, if a bullet hits glass, you can often get little shards of glass peeling off. And that brings us to the end. So are there any further questions? Just give us a moment in case anybody has any questions, please feel free. Either raise your hand and we'll ask you to you can ask the question yourself, or if you want to type in the Q&A. Oh, here we go. There's a question. Okay. 
if you had to remove the security film, what technique would you use? Okay, I didn't actually cover that in here because that's something that I would normally cover in um, uh, in the installation uh, training course. We've got a, a course which, which covers installation. Removing films. Okay. Removing films from a window, the best method of doing it, um, well, there are lots of different ways of doing it, is if you can cut the film up into pieces without damaging the glass, cut it into strips and get a scraper and try and scrape it off and peel it off that way. That's, that's a good method of doing it. Um, a slower method that works quite well is to get either liner or maybe a black plastic sack and cut it open so you've got a big piece of black polythene. Spray the window with detergent and water and slap the polythene onto it and maybe tape it in place to stop it peeling off and leave it there for at least half an hour. That moisture that you've put on the window that's holding the bag in place the bag will help to trap some heat against that and the moisture will soak through the film, softening it. So it's not guaranteed. Try after half an hour or 45 minutes and if it's helping to remove the film, that's great. Otherwise, spray it with more detergent and water and put the bag back and leave it for longer. It will take a while, but ultimately you will soften the film up, film up enough to get it off. Um, other methods are wallpaper steamers. The beauty of wallpaper steamer is that it drives that moisture into the film and will soften it quite quickly. But the secret to that is do not stop. Do not hold that in place for too long because you'll end up really heating up the glass and it's <coughs> not likely, but it is possible to break it. So keep that wallpaper steamer head moving around and you will soften that. There are chemical removers, but they tend to be slow and smelly. Um, but generally, if you there are no good ways. It's like removing any other sort of graphics. You know, find someone else to do it is probably the simple solution or get the apprentice to do it. That, there's another good one. Any further questions? Uh, ah, yeah. um... Can you please provide information regarding the glazing industry? Sorry, industry and their rubbishing of window films. <laughs> Has 3M been in any dialogue with these ones? Constantly. It's a constant thorn on our side. The trouble with the glazing industry is they have their own, um, you know, their own hidden agenda, and their hidden agenda is that they don't want window films because they don't want anything to do with the glass breakage or the warranty side of things. So they'll say, don't put window films on because your glass will break total misnomer but they'll do it purely because they want to sell a more expensive glass which may have some other protection in it they may want to sell a toughened glass or a tinted glass or something like that it's a problem that we will battle to the end of our days we will never convince the window film industry uh, the window glazing industry that we're actually a good honest solution to a number of their problems yes that's a difficult one Yes, we battle it constantly. And I get people ringing up all the time saying, oh, such and such company recommend that I didn't do it for these reasons. You know, what do you think? And I'll, and I'll be able to give them the, you know, the, the good oil um, with regard to window films. Because, yeah, they will tell, um, not lies, that's not the right way of putting it, but they will um, glaze over the truth uh, to try and get sales or to try and avoid anything from that um, so there are plenty of uh, you know yeah, plenty of times we've had that argument with them yeah it's a difficult one but we do the best we can to try and mitigate that we do know that we lose jobs and as an industry that's a problem but I don't know what we can do about it because those guys in many cases simply do not want us to put window films on because it it will void their warranties and they, they're concerned about glass breakage and people going back to the glass manufacturer saying it's your fault. Right, does that answer the question? Because we're just coming up on time now. So any further questions, feel free to contact us off offline. I will uh, be sending out the course notes shortly for this course. So everyone will get the course notes. Michael, just a further comment on that question about the glass industry. Um, is there any data that we can provide to counteract the window glazing industry saying about the warranties on the glass and voiding it or any testimonials? What ammo can we provide basically? 
or would it be a case by case basis it, come to you and we can discuss or how it, do you recommend we handle that there, there will be documents out there and I don't have them myself but I know on the Australian New Zealand Window Film Association you know the you know it, Australian New Zealand Window Film Association I can't remember the exact details they will have an information on their website you know because there is an association for, for people with for window films and they do have a have a lot of that um, you know a, a lot of that information there on their website so if you're having any issues with um, a particular project please come to us Michael can look into that with you understand what the art based compelling argument would be we can talk to our Australian colleagues as well see if we can reference anything there and we can put our best solution forward. Um, as Michael said, it's an ongoing battle. It's on a, you know, we're going to have to just face it as we come across it. And you can understand why they're they're concerned about protecting their industry, and they don't want window films because they they see it as being detrimental to their industry. Um, you know, this this happens to every it happens to everyone over time. Well, thank you all very much. We're just coming up on time now. So if there are any further questions, let us know straight away. Otherwise, contact us offline and we'll be able to cover those for you. Thank you very much, everybody. Much appreciated. So in terms of computer letter, please reach out to your sales rep or to Rachel being the, the sales manager for Window Films um, or reach out to Michael, Mike or myself. We're here to help and support and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye now. Thanks.